Now, this is big. Just today on Twitter, there was a new buzz on this new GPT model that attempts to turn large language models into a kind of virtual operating system so that it can basically manage its own memory, which enables the unbounded context window. Now, in a simpler sense, it's treating LMs as an operating system. It basically allows large language models to manage their own memory for unbounded context. This new model is called MemGPT, or also known as MemoryGPT. Some of the creators of MemGPT are behind and part of the Gorilla LM team, which shows a strong backing for this project. With MemGPT, the creators are trying to accomplish this framework in which it can teach a range of LMs to design a system so that LMs can manage its own memory with different tiered memory systems, as well as a set of its own functions. Let's quickly take a look at this architecture, which simplifies what I just stated. Right away on their blog post, we can see that they are trying to teach LMs to manage their own memories as operating systems so that it can have unbounded context. Now, if you take a look at the framework, it's the framework of how MemGPT actually operates. It consists of a central language model, and that's basically thought of as a thinking engine. Now, this LM takes in the primary set of information, much like how a computer's main memory does with its RAM. Now, it processes this information and it produces it as a text output. Now, this model then interprets this output, leading to two possible outcomes. Firstly, it starts off by deciding to pause its actions temporarily by a yield, or secondly, it makes a request for a specific operation, like a function call. Now, these function calls allows the model to manage its own memories, similar to how a computer transfers data between the main memory and the disk storage. Now, when the LM then generates a function cell, it can then plan to like basically perform a sequence of operations. And this is basically by requesting a control in advance. Now, in this case of yielding, the LM takes a break and waits into external events such as user messages or a scheduled task, as well as prompts to basically resume its actions. Now, this framework is what is basically what allows MemGPT to handle information and respond to external inputs effectively. We can see that over here, it starts off with the event, parses it into MemGPT, which utilizes the virtual context as well as the external context, parses it to the function, which sends it back into the input. And this basically responds to external inputs effectively. And that's basically the gist of how MemGPT basically operates. Now, throughout today's video, we're gonna take a look further more into detail what you can actually do with this amazing application talking a little bit more as to how you can implement this with other applications like autogen to basically revolutionize technology we're also going to take a look at how you can install it locally on our desktop by going over the github repository to do a quick demonstration as to running it locally but with that thought guys make sure you stay tuned throughout the end of this video but with that thought let's get straight into it Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video at the World of AI. As you mentioned, we're going to take a look as to what MemGPT is about. But in simpler terms, MemGPT is a language model with a distinctive architecture, which we took a look at. And it's basically combining the fixed context language processing core with the tiered memory system and a memory management function. And this is what gives it its outbound context. Now, during this processing cycle, MemGPT can basically choose to either yield the control or await its external triggers, like how a user messages or schedules different types of events. And this is basically something that it manages its memory with. These functions calls are basically to save or retrieve data from memory tiers and memory GPT can basically chain them together for sequences or actions. This architecture is what 
allows MemGPT to intelligently handle and recall information so that it can make it a powerful tool for various different types of applications, including chatbots, more interactive language-based systems, as well as achieving its final goal, goal as becoming an operating system. If you would like to access our private Discord in which you can get exclusive giveaways, exclusive subscriptions to AI tools for free, consultation, network opportunities, collaboration, and so much more, definitely take a look at the Discord link in the description below. If you guys would like to get the latest AI news, I highly recommend that you follow World of AI on Twitter. I'll leave this link in the description below. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn notification bell, like this video, and check out our previous videos because there's a lot of content that will definitely benefit you for free. So with that thought, let's get right back into the video. Now, let's actually take a look at some real world examples as to what you can do. In this case, they have created a perpetual chatbot with self-editing memory. Now, what this basically means is that it can basically operate continuously without interruption. And these chatbots have the capability to autonomously update and improve their knowledge as well as their information based off the conversations they have. It's effectively enhancing their performance over time. And this concept basically envisions chatbots so that it can continuously run and become smarter and more capable to interact with what you're trying to input and we can see over here with this uh memory gpt application you're able to hit enter to begin and you can see hello chad how's your day so far also have you caught up with the latest formula one race and we can see that it has this perpetual memory which self edits itself and we can see my name is brad not chad and then it then inputs this function which updates the memory within its core memory replacement function and we can see over here the first name chad is gone and is replaced with brad now if you go down a little bit we can see my apologies brad i'm not sure where i got the chat from let's try this again how's your day been also have you watched the latest formula one race and that is quite amazing to me this is going to be very very useful in the future when you combine it with certain things like autogen for example and that's something we're going to take a look at later on in the video now another example we can see is chat with your data and you can actually try this with llama index api docs now with this example we can see you start off with the welcome message. Welcome, Chad. I'm here to assist you with any document analysis task that you might have. How can I help you today? And then in this case, they inputted this prompt. Does Llama Index have any abstractions for optimizing the node chunking, chunk size, and overall for specific document? This was the question that was asked. And we can see over here, the internal system then sends a function to update the memory. And then it queues up the Llama Index node chunking. It starts off with page zero. And there's a second function that is updating the memory which does the exact same for page size optimization and with this output we can see in llama index a node corresponds to a chunk of text from a document and further and then describes what the input was based off the data that was inputted previously into memory gpt which is absolutely amazing now if you're if you can see there's a comparison with ChatGPT 4 when asked the same question and it fails to provide you the same type of relevance to what memory gpt was actually able to do so how can you actually get started with memory gpt there's a couple of ways you can do this with discord this is probably the easiest way and they have a good demonstration as to how you can access this and play around with it i highly recommend that you check out this quick setup which you can take a look at on their discord you basically send a message to the mem gpt bot which you can then access in your private dms but in this case, I'm going to be showing you how to actually install this locally with MemGPT. Now, what you need to do first is have an API with OpenAI ready. Make sure you have this key ready as we're going to be using it for this environment. Now, we're also going to be needing Git, which is an application that will help you clone any sort of repository onto your desktop. You will also need Python and Visual Studio Code to input the actual API key into memory GPT. So once you have these three things fulfilled, let's get started. Now I'll leave all the links in the description below so you can access it fairly easily. What you want to do is go onto the memgpt file or the repository, sorry, click on this green button, copy the link for this repository, open up command prompt. Once you have that open up, type in git clone, paste the link and click enter. This will start cloning this repository onto your desktop. 
once this is done you can then go down start installing the dependencies now this is fairly easy you just need to go into the mem gpt file this is by typing in cd mem gpt then click enter then type in pip install dash requirements and this will start installing the dependencies this might take a couple of seconds to a couple of minutes once this is done we can get started further on with the video now guys to run this you simply just copy this code python main.py and i just pasted it in and you can easily start running this up it says hit enter to begin but i haven't inputted my open ai key so for windows there is a different command which is set open ai api key and then put your input your api key into over here uh, for mac os you just simply use export but in this case i'm going to be moving forward with the tutorial uh it'll then uh it asks you to hit enter to begin so i'm going to click enter now you can see i got this error over here because i haven't provided the open ai api key so i'm going to input this key and i'm going to get back towards this so i've inputted my api key and we can see over here i clicked enter and it then starts off by saying hello chad i'm sam it's great to meet you for the first time i can't help but notice that you're a fan of taste of the himalayas restaurant in berkeley can you tell me more about your favorite dish here so i'm gonna say uh sorry let me click back on this sorry my name is not chad it's world of ai and i haven't been there Let's see if it can then reiterate on whatever the statement was and add it to its new memory, telling it that I have not actually been there. So we can see over here, it updates its memory. First name is now world of AI, which is the new name that I gave it. And now it's gonna then respond to what I said that I haven't been to this actual restaurant. I apologize for the misunderstanding world of AI. I corrected my mistake. Since you haven't been to the taste of the Himalayas yet, let's talk about something else. Are you? Are there any upcoming Formula 1 races you're excited about? Nope, <laughs> not any. I am a big fan of the Lakers though. And let's see if it's able to build upon this. So once it has finished thinking, I'll be right back. And just like that, it keeps on updating its memory function and it will then keep on corresponding to whatever I input. That's the great thing about memory GPT. It's basically following along with the couple examples that I had over here, chatting with your own data, as well as creating the self-editing memory, which is absolutely amazing. And that's basically just the gist of what you can do with this memory. If now you guys, if you are to go on Visual Studio Code, you're able to upload your own sort of memory. In that case, you can upload your own documents, have different APIs connected to this so that it can give it more memory from the documents that you provide it. Now, this data can then further refine the memory of an agent. And imagine if you're able to connect this with Autogen, for example, you can give smarter memory that keeps on like improving its memory as it generates more sorts of content with different categories and these agents then get keep on continuously working autonomously to improve itself and build different types of content and this is something that is really really useful for a lot of people and i definitely see a lot of people evolving this technology further on by creating more self-editing memory chatbots that could be used in various different types of scenarios now i highly recommend that you check this out i'll leave all the links in the description below let's now move on to the next step of the video where we talk a little bit more about the research paper as to showcasing what this is truly about now guys if you are to go on the research paper there is a lot more information as well as a lot more content to describe what this memory gpt model is truly about there's a lot more example there's external context as to what you can do with it you have a lot more ideas as to how the experiments were performed if you go down a little bit more there is an illustration on deep memory retrieval task there's also graphs of the deep memory retrieval performances with different models such as the gpt4 and gpt3.5 models uh, if you go down even more there's different methods for conversation opener performance and it just goes on and on to give you a more direct demonstration as to how memory gpt is able to accomplish its basic capabilities 
and that's basically it for today's video guys i hope you enjoyed today's video uh if you want me to go a little bit more in depth as to what you can do with this i can definitely do a more in-depth analysis on my twitter or my discord so with that thought guys thank you guys so much for watching i'll leave all the links in the description below this is really really a really amazing project that you should definitely keep an eye out it's fairly new it just dropped today and i just believe that it will be something that will definitely revolutionize the way we use certain types of technology with their perpetual chatbots as well as its self-learning memory system so with that thought guys thank you guys so much for watching have an amazing day uh make sure you guys check out the patreon page if you guys haven't already so you can access our private discord and so much more make sure you subscribe uh check out our twitter page if you guys haven't already so you can stay up to date with the latest ai news and lastly subscribe as i stated before turn on notification bell like this video and check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with the latest ai news but with that thought guys thank you guys so much for watching have an amazing day spread positivity and i'll see you guys fairly shortly peace out fellas